This is Brent Richardson, and welcome to the Business Minutia Podcast, where our focus is on the details of business that are often passed over by traditional classes and leadership training. We focus on the stories of real people who have tried, failed, and learned through their experiences and are willing to share their lessons with Jamie, we had a chance to take our kids to the State Fair of Texas a couple of years ago. Oddly enough, we lived here for years and and hadn't gone, but we had really great memories, and it it really brought things back, just being there with the kids. Oh, yeah. The games, the rides, the food. Yes. And there was one ride that the kids really wanted to ride on, and you had to, you were able to talk two of them into it, right? Well, it was one of my favorite rides as a kid, was the Gravitron. Right, and I would get on that thing and and uh, get in there and get upside down, and I don't know how many. T- I probably rode that. Okay, thing so for people who don't know row. what this is, explain it. A gravitron, man, that's it. It just spins in circles and sticks you to the wall. That's that's the that's the equivalent of it. And all these rides have kind of a, you know, they they roll up and fold up on the back of a truck. They all kind of look a little <laughs> sketchy. I just remember thinking as a kid, this is perfectly normal. I oh, like, yeah. I would like to ride this motorized thing that fits in the back of this guy's truck. And then I look at it with my kids, and I'm like, eek, yeah, we still do it, because it's almost tradition. And once you get on the thing, you realize it's a blast, and you feel like a kid again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for me, it was games. We did a lot of games when I was growing up, and my favorite was there was a fish game, and there were a bunch of fish in, a, in little fishing bowls, and you were given ping pong balls, and you had to pop the ping pong balls and bounce them off the wood and into the little bowls. And if you did it successfully, then you got to bring home a nickel goldfish. To be clear, you're talking about beer pong. No, no, there was no beer involved. Okay, I'm just <laughs> I was sure. like <laughs> 10. <laughs> And what did you win out of this? Goldfish. And what did you do? Like with- literal live goldfish. How many goldfish did you win? Uh, one year, I remember 10 or 12 goldfish. Oh, good grief. That's insane. That's too many goldfish. Let's not talk about what happened I, to goldfish. <laughs> well, we know how pet fish. <laughs> we know how that ends. It's not, it's not positive. But we're talking about the state fair. What we're really talking about is food. Food, 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 and, fried, and, everything. And we have folks that most of our listening audience is, is, uh, are from the state of Texas and from the Dallas area. But we have lots of listeners from California, New Jersey. We're all over the place. We've got people in Taiwan and Malaysia listening to us. So they don't know anything about the State Fair of Texas, and they don't know anything about this fried, this uh, tradition. Help, help us understand. Well, the idea in Texas is you can take any food in the world and fry it. Fact. Yes. And my and it makes kids, it better. Yeah, our kids love Not for fried you. bacon, fried Dr. Pepper, there's fried cheese, there's fried onions, there's fried butter. Yeah. And you <laughs> fried fry you fry anything and it's just I haven't had is there fried peanut butter? I don't know. I don't but know. yeah, there was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich a few years ago. Okay. All right. But what has been there the longest? Well, the original fried food that's the traditional staple. There's two staples, I would say, of the State Fair of Texas. And that's Big Tex. And you can go Google that and, and see the Fletcher's gen- Corny and Dogs. Fletcher's Corny Dog. So this is the original Corny Dog. The inventor of the Corny Dog, is this is Fletcher's. This is their company, right? And so this has been a, a staple uh, for everyone. And while we're sitting here reminiscing about the State Fair and thinking about our past, Lots of folks out there a little bitter. They don't get to go to the state fair this year because of the COVID crisis where there is no, it's been canceled. Well, and it's one thing people like us that are customers. It's another thing altogether for the people who are actually selling their products there and depend on that state fair for a paycheck. And that's really what we're going to be getting into in in the next few weeks is in the coming months. in, In fact, in some of our interviews is the effect of the current crisis on small business. It's really been tragic. We've personally tried to go prop up and support the small businesses that we love because we want them there. Yeah. When a crisis is over, we want those places that are still there. We want our local butcher shops. We want our local places, those those spots that we that we love to go as a family. We want those there. And that's no different from Fletcher's. The difference is they have already, they're working a pivot strategy that we both fell in love with. And so this is really awesome. And this is something that people need to hear about and hoping that it inspires them to get through this crisis and pivot in a similar way. 
Right. And you and I were talking about having some different small businesses on the podcast. And it happened to be that day, that same day that the state fair had said they were canceling. And then that afternoon, I'm looking at the news and I see that Fletcher's is doing something very creative. And I do what I am prone to do. And I just contacted him and said, hey, Hey, we we want to hear your story. We talked about this in the episode last week. You have no problem cold calling anybody. And uh, And you know what? They agree. And it did. It worked out. So we got an opportunity to interview uh, Aaron Fletcher, who is the grandson of the inventor of the corny dog. And had a really good conversation that we'll share with you guys. And uh, you'll hear a little bit about how they're pivoting. And I I hope it's very inspirational for those of you out there in the small business community that are trying to get through these challenging times and through this crisis to pivot. And and Aaron talks about that. Yeah, and he's able to tell us uh, some of the lighter uh, failures, (laughs) things they have tried that didn't work out. That's my favorite part of the interview. (laughs) And what part that he's actually made, what invention that is still at the stands that he created. So let's get into it. I want to really thank Aaron Fletcher for taking the time to come and, and talk with us. I also want to make sure I give a shout out to Lori Walker and the folks at the Chamber of Commerce in Flower Mound, Texas. So fantastic. You guys gave us an opportunity to sync up. Finding a location where we can get together is becoming challenging in the COVID times. And so I really want to appreciate, we value face-to-face connection for these interviews because it just makes such a huge difference in the conversational uh, tone of the discussion. So without further ado, enjoy our conversation with Aaron Fletcher and Fletcher's Corny Dogs. I think the the story that you guys have uh, in terms of with, with the pandemic and the, and the situation that we're all in is is I th- hoping it's inspiring to a lot of the small businesses in Dallas. Before we get into that, though, I want to know a little bit about what 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 life is like growing up in this family. Because as a native Texan, I can tell you we take great pride right in right. in the state, and so things like. Um, the blue bonnet, the mockingbird, all these things. We take this great pride. I heard somebody else the other day say, oh, the Texans have big egos. Eh, I think it's pride. It's a little bit different. Uh, yeah, yeah, but different. I would say, you know, the State Fair and Fletcher's Corny Dogs are part of the staple that goes with that. What's right. it like growing up in that family? Um, you know, I guess for me, it was normal. <laughs> you know, a lot, a lot of people, uh, they look at it from the outside and they're, they look at how big – you know, our businesses, how popular it is and everything, but it's, it's just normal family life. You know, that, that was just like, you know, when my dad and mom went to work, that was just my parents going to work, you know, was was there a time when you realized that, okay, this may not be standard for everyone? Yes. Um, I didn't appreciate it so much when I was younger, but you know, there was just one of those times I was walking at the fair and I saw the line at one of our stands and I just said, we're a big deal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was this like, is this, not, this is important to yeah, people. This is important. Yeah. It's, it is a big deal. Right. And then, of course, I'm sure you guys have had tons of people that have been like, wait a minute, you can't cancel the fair. How am I going to get my corny dogs? Yeah. You know, we had, um, well, I'll say, you know, back in March when all this hit, that was kind of, we kind of bounced around the idea of, well, if there's not a fair. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had some friends that I talked to and they were like, man, what, what are you guys going to do if there's no fair? And that was just, not, it was kind of like denial, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, we yeah. all didn't want right. to accept that it was going to happen, but we had to plan for it yeah, yeah, yeah. to not happen. Right. Um, at what point in the process were you involved in a family business? At what point? Um, I was about, I was always out there. They, my first year at birth, I was out there in a cradle in the office. So I, <laughs> I've been involved, you know, my entire life, but I think, you know, around, uh, probably good 15, 16. So probably around 19 or 20 is when I really started shadowing my dad out there and trying to get a feel for, um, all the little nuances of the business. You know, yeah. one thing my dad always liked to say is corny dogs are simple, but they aren't easy. Mm. And that is so true because you look at it and you just say, okay, here's this food on a stick. You know, anybody can do that. But there's so much that has to go into from the batter, cooking temperature, the meat, all of that kind of stuff. So it's been a learning process this entire time. I still, you know, there's still things I'm learning here and there, even from my mom that 
you know, I don't think about and that she'll point out and I'll just say, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then over time, you just get more and more involved in the business and get yeah. more and more engaged. Yeah. And you don't even realize it. You know, there's you start off down, you know, at the bottom. And before you know it, you're like, oh, wow, I'm wearing about 30 hats right now yeah. <laughs> on this business. Right. Because, you know, we're we're a big, small business. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a pretty large operation, but it's run by four people. Yeah. So. It's efficient. We're, yeah, we're all yeah. we're all doing something. And I think I can appreciate the you know while it is simple, it's complicated. Yeah, you know, analogy you give or, or example. You when when you got, I took my kids to the fair for the first time uh, last year, year before last. Yeah, and you could see the line and the people mm-hmm. and watching the process that you guys go through to have you know it's 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 a it's a machine. Yeah, it really is a very clean operation. That uh, and you have to to maintain a certain level of quality control, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And quality is our number one thing. You know, that's the one thing that every fair. You know, um, we're we're lucky in that we have a lot of return employees, but we also get a lot of new people every fair. And that's one thing. You know, we really try to hammer on is that quality control. And that's you know probably a good seventy five percent of my job while I'm out there. Mm. I'm walking to each of our seven locations. I'm looking and I'm. Yeah, and, you know, I'm hoping, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know that they got it right and that, yeah. you know, you're not going to have a customer that, you know, yeah. is telling you this isn't what I Good. what I'm used to, you know. You so, want to hear the positive. Yeah, right? you want somebody to say this is my the best corny dog I've ever had or right. this is the reason I come to the fair. Right. You know, and I just want to keep that up. You know, it's been 80 years. Yeah. So, you know, another 80 years of this is my favorite thing. That's would be right. Great. That's right. Which comes with its own set of, you know, um, expectations and pressure that you want to live up to this, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, there's there's so much, you know, positive that we've done that you're also afraid that any little change, you know, is going to just collapse the whole thing. (laughs) So, you know, it's stuff as small as what if we tried a different mustard this year? You're like, no, we can't do that. We've had the same one for 20 years, you know, so. Yeah. And and yet you want to keep innovating. Yeah. And you want to keep innovating and you want to make sure you're on top of the game and that, you know, you're staying out there, you know, you want to stay, Especially at the fair where there's fried everything. Exactly. Every year. You want to stay classic and you want to stay original, but you don't want to become obsolete. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you've already contributed your own innovations to the company, right? So right. The, the Cheesy Pup is, is, is your baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, um, well, I can't take 100% credit. I'll take 100% credit for the rebirth. Okay. Um, when I was younger, that was one of the things um, that we would do out at the fair. You know, they would bring out some cheese sticks and they'd stick it in the batter and. Okay. Then we stopped it for a few years, and I was like, man, that was really good. <laughs> and all of our products, especially up until recently, you know, everything's been very meat-based. Right. And we have more of a vegetarian kind of audience starting to come in. Mm-hmm. So we were like, well, what can we do other than just the veggie dog mm-hmm. that, you know, people might eat or, you know, something for kids to enjoy? Right. And we brought that out and tinkered with it. And Right. So a- any failed ideas that didn't make the cut that you can share? <laughs> Uh, there was an attempt at a flaming hot Cheeto corn dog that was <laughs> that was a crash and burn. Now, would, it, would it just be the batter, or you're actually see? I, we're not food scientists. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're just <laughs> Throwing, we're just me and my sister yeah. tinkering around the kitchen. And we had this idea of let's just crush up some Cheetos and put it in the batter and fry it, and it didn't end very well. It wasn't good. Huh? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything you thought was going to make it good went away. Yeah, <laughs> so you're sure. just left with this weird, oily, soggy. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It um, does have to have a certain texture. There's got to be a crunch to it, you know. And mm. when you bite in, all you get is mush. That's not. Yeah, that's not what you want. That's not what you want. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not going to be able to achieve uh, quality control with that. No, yeah. not at all. Consistency is going to be yeah. difficult. Yeah. I mean, maybe if we could find a way to like mix the flame and hot into the batter, that might be. Good. That's what I thought. You were yeah, talking if about. we could do yeah. that, that'd be. Yeah. That might be a good way yeah, to go. Yeah, especially for your folks that like, so like the jalapeno yeah. that horny dog is the yeah. one that I get every um, time. That, 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 patent that. pending on what I just said. You know, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. yeah. Hey, I've got a special place. i got an account. You can give me a account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it uh, is a good idea. It's yeah. a good idea. Um, but other than that, you know, we've, we've stayed pretty true to ourselves yeah. over the years. So there hasn't been too many failed innovations. Pretty yeah. much everything we put out there um, – you know, we have a pretty good idea that it's going to be a good product. Sure. And you're testing it out. Yeah. And making sure that it's something that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's get into more on the business side. Yeah, definitely. And so when you when you guys actually, you know, we talked about pivoting. Mm-hmm. And you guys actually, it seems like you were pivoting and shifted a little bit prior to this year. Like back into last year, you guys were shifting to the to the food truck or something like that. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we got a trailer mm-hmm. that we started using last year. 
you know, for so many years, we were just out at the fair. Um, before that, we did have some standalones in the malls and stuff like that. But for the, probably the last, oh, geez, 25 years, you know, it just been the state fair. And um, as me and my sister and my cousin have kind of come up, you know, and as my dad and my uncle and my mom have kind of stepped back a little bit and kind of said, you know, you guys are going to be running this in the future. Where do you want to take it? Yeah. Um, and that was one of the things, you know, we looked at, we, we threw around the idea of a brick and mortar, um, and we just didn't think it was time for that mm-hmm. yet, you know, because we're such a seasonal operation. Sure. And there's just so many, uh, lack of a better word, emotions tied to a corn dog that, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, I call it an event food. Yeah. You know, you're going to an event and right. that's what you want. That's right. So we had the idea of, well, let's try this trailer out. Sure. You know, we were blessed enough that we had some places that reached out to us and said, hey, we want to have Fletcher's out here. Sure. Uh, like Frisco, 4th of July, that was our first big one with that trailer, I yeah. think. But and that's another good classic example of an yeah. event where I'm there and I'm like, that sounds good. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that made sense. So you guys were thinking through this already. Yes. So walk me through, you know, once this, you, you'd mentioned in March. Right. At what point does it start to creep in? You go, okay, we should, we, it's a good thing we did that. Yeah. We need to pivot. Um, In March, you know, there was, uh, once it started happening, I started looking at other restaurants, you know, um, there was some in Dallas, like I think Oddfellas and Rapscallion and stuff. And I started seeing, you know, they were doing kind of the pantries and the meal pickups. So I started um, really just kind of trying to get my mind going, like, all right, what can we do yeah. like this? What What is something that's safe yeah. for this that, you know, we can get out there and push? And um, these na- neighborhood events started mm-hmm. coming up, mm-hmm. you know, and I started saying, like, why don't we do that? You know, we there's a certain happiness that comes with yeah. comfort food. Absolutely. You know, and we're definitely a comfort food. So yeah. those started coming up and we started just kind of booking those and then word of mouth, you know, one led to another, led to another, led to another. Yeah. And it just it and, grew from there. And you guys have done some things to support first responders and things like that. Yeah. With this as well. Right? Yeah. Maybe we talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, we had some people reach out to us and say, Hey, you know, there's, police department first responders um we want to do something for them we're gonna go ahead and we'll pay you guys you guys just take the corn dogs to the officers so we did a few of those and um that's actually kind of what led into the neighborhood events a little bit yeah how much does the how much would the, did the state fair being canceled how much did that have an will that have an effect and how much is it how much do you anticipate needing to pivot or how much fear, I guess, was there? You mentioned March. You're like, ah, <laughs> give us an idea of, I mean, it is seasonal. What do you feel like the impact will be? If you, if, if you can say it all. On us personally or? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's our, that's our thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, yeah. that's a very big yeah. impact for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, financially, um, it could have been a bigger hit had you know my parents not instilled at a younger age be a saver for a rainy day you know that they've always said that they said they've always said this is a seasonal business Mm -hmm. and you don't know when you're gonna have a bad season so um but of course it's nice to have that payday yeah absolutely (laughs) um but you know we have employees that we want to watch out for and um so it was pretty important for us to you know not only support ourselves but be able to have something for our longtime employees to make sure that, you know, they can take care of themselves. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's enough of an impact that you're immediately you're like, okay, we need to focus on a pivot strategy. We have to have some mechanism to go reach out. Yeah, absolutely. I think actually, um, it was kind of a fast forward button it mm-hmm. is the best way to put it. Um, there's a lot of things that we've been thinking about doing, yeah. but we just didn't, you know, really push the gas down because yeah. we had the fare. Sure. So it was very easy to say, yeah, you know, we'll do this later, but yeah, we got the fair coming up, so we're good. But yeah. not having the fair very much made us say, okay, we can do this now, yeah. and let's open up this stream and this stream and this stream. So yeah. it really got us up and got us moving. Which goes back to your point earlier about, you know, the, the boundaries between not changing versus you need some level of innovation that you're right. thinking about because you never know when you're going to need to. Yes, exactly. And now you're having to accelerate yeah. that innovation and come up with something, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you guys have made that shift to the point where now you're, you're, I see the events, right? Yes. And we'll get, we'll get to that in a yeah. second. You guys are starting to, uh, 
get pop, pop into these events with your pop. Now you right. said you had one trailer last year, but it seems like you guys have. Is there multiple now? Well, what we have is um, oh geez, I don't want to get the year wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think three years ago is when we brought out. We have a very large concession trailer that we use at the state fair. Um, we brought that one out for our 75th anniversary. So yeah, three years ago. Okay. And then uh, we last year. We got our second trailer, which was a little bit more mobile. And then at, towards the end of last year, we added a third trailer. Um, that's smaller for the smaller events and stuff like that. So we got three that we can use. We got two we prefer to use, which are the two smaller ones, because the, okay. the large one is quite the operation to get up and get going. Got but. It. And how does the booking process work? For those, maybe let's let listeners know. If you don't know, that you guys have events yes. that, that you are making this available. Yes. And that they can reach out to you and get to the website and, and, and are available to make to make bookings, right? Yeah, the website's the easiest way to go through. We have um, we have a form on there, you know, that you can fill out, send in. And right now we're booked through what would be the state fair dates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the way to get it. It, it may wind it. up going the other direction to where it's not the impact that you had expected based on it. It's really, yeah, it's really doing pretty good. Yeah. 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 May, may reinvigorate the business a little bit, right. and take it a little bit different direction. That, yeah. That, I mean, it's, it's definitely showing us what we have the ability to do. You know, sure. I think like all these other restaurants are learning that they have the ability to do these curbside operations and to go operations. We've learned that we have the ability to pop up wherever we need to sure. pop up. Yeah. Yeah. So you're involved in, in, in the, in the food industry all through Dallas. And like you said, you guys are a big, small business, yes. but you're, I'm sure you're networked and seeing and observing what's going on. And like you said, you mentioned monitoring some of what some of the other businesses right. do. What are you observing in terms of the impact for the DFW area in terms of small business, especially in the food industry? Um, innovation is what I'm observing. You know, there's, I am actually, I mean, there's so many companies that, you know, I'm just looking at, I'm like, wow, that's smart, you know, from companies deciding to do pantries, you know, to get rid of some of their excess food. Um, and then we got some people that we even worked out at the state fair with Smokey John's barbecue, mm -hmm. you know, that friends of ours just watching them, man, they've just exploded with the delivery service. Mm -hmm. So just watching how all these companies have changed their marketing, you know, and they've really worked on the logistics of how can we continue to get a product to people instead of just sitting here and hoping people come to us sure. you know, is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of uh, logistics challenges or if at all have you guys run into as you, as you've gone through this pivot? It's one thing to say, okay, we had the idea, we're going to go do this, but now you're getting into all new territory, right? I would say probably the biggest for us is uh, just recently coming up, you know, with the social distancing kind of things, um, which, you know, people put on us. Um, unfortunately, there's not much we can do about it because what's happening is we're being booked by people like this last one we did in Carrollton. Uh, you know, that was with Connie Rosso and three nations brewery um so they were more in charge of that line versus mm. us letting everybody cram through so that's kind of what you know just making sure everybody feels safe yeah. and like they can come up and you know making sure all of our employees you know yeah. make them feel safe by wearing that was going to be my stuff. next question is how what are you guys doing in that regard so these events are happening and, and are, are you guys doing anything to try to do your best to hurt? You know, you're still going to have quite a few people there, yeah. right? Which is kind of the opposite of what everybody's trying to accomplish. Right. You want people organized and spread out a little bit. What are you guys doing to, to try to herd cattle in that? <laughs> well, you know, with our employees, we make sure that they, you know, they have their fa face masks on and, right. you know, they're washing their hands frequently and things like that. And, you know, out to a certain point, we mark off the six feet. Um, sure. But, I mean, there's only so far you can go sure, out with that yeah, when you have, right. you know, 300 people show up. Yeah. There's only so much you can do. But Right. And we, then, again, you get into that, how do you spacing families out? Yeah. Families together in this area. Right. Right. But you guys are doing everything you can to get Yeah, we there. do what we can, you know, and we just kind of leave it up to people to use their common sense. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Which, <laughs> you, you know, a lot of people are. Sure. You know, I, I look when I'm out there and I'm like, okay, you know, right. people are taking right. care of it. Yeah. For the most part, that's what I observe as well. Yeah. 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 yeah so folks who, you know, 
maybe a little bitter about not getting to venture off to the state fair. I know my kids were upset that uh, they didn't get a chance to go this year. I, for last year, what year before, I think, was the first time I'd taken them. And I, I didn't take them because I never thought they'd really care that yeah. much. And then you go, and all they want to do is find some crazy fried thing. Yeah, eat, right, right. right. And uh, I try to drag them onto a couple of rides, and they'll ride a little bit. But for the most part, they just won't walk no, around. That's, yeah, it's all about the food. Eat garbage. That's yeah. Right. And that's, I mean, look, at, look at cows. And, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, rides are okay. I'm not going to say anything bad about the rides because I, sure. I rode them when I was younger. You but, bet. yeah, I mean, around – age 11 or so they kind of lost their appeal and it just kind of turned into what's right. the weirdest thing i can find to eat yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and that, there's such there's there's a certain social aspect of it and yeah. just in general of going to the fair it's mm-hmm. like, like i said it's a it's an event mentality and yeah. it's something that uh, definitely will be missed this year big techs and 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 corny dogs that right that, you know so uh, it's pretty cool that people at least will have opportunities to go get part of that fix. For yeah, themselves. yeah. You can go by, drive by Big Tex. Right. Uh, just go wave at them, you know. <laughs> on the way. Uh, I don't know. Have we ever had the State Fair? This is the first time. Uh, it was canceled back during World War II. Okay, yeah. Um, it was turned into an Army base. Right. And then it was actually canceled in 1918 for the Spanish flu. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're reliving I know. some of this. It's history right here. Yeah, absolutely. Which would have been about the time the corny dog was invented. Yeah. Well, right? corny dog was invented in 1942. Yeah. Yeah. So right around somewhere in that time frame where, where, where this yeah. thing was invented. Right Now, I, I, I poked around a little bit, and I see some controversy here around who actually invented, right? So it's your your grandfather is credited, or is your grandfather your grandfather it's, and his brother? It was him and his brother. His it was brother. Neil Fletcher and Carl right, Fletcher. Right, are credited as the, as the corny dog inventors. Yes. And then I see somebody in Minnesota making claim. Come on. All right, well, here's the deal. In Minnesota, you got a pronto pup. Okay. Which is not the same as a corn dog because a pronto pup is a flour, but it's more like a pancake uh, based mix. So they can't really lay claim to being a corn dog if okay. you're not a corn There's no corn product. Milk. Got yeah. It. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then from what I can tell from the story, is there was someone in the Dallas area that was doing something as so similar. But it was more um, a way more complicated process. And it wasn't on a stick, it wasn't something you could no, carry. No, I mean. I got all my my stories from my dad, and he was a bit of an embellisher here and there. But, <laughs> but you know, from for the most part, what the standard story was is there was, um, I believe, a Dutchman okay. who, what he would do is he would take a Frankfurter and he would coat it in a cornmeal batter, and then he would bake it, okay, and kind of serve it like that. So it was kind of like a very complicated pig in a blanket. Okay, and then from there, my grandfather and um, I don't know what you call a grand uncle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they saw that and they said, okay, well, there's gotta be a more efficient way to do this. And they, yeah. they went back to their home and just got to work. Yeah. And it wasn't, uh, wasn't widely accepted initially. I think they struggled. No, they had to, right? they gave them away at yeah. the start. Give small versions of them and yeah, people would just, just you know. like, please take this try. And this. then somewhere along the way, people are like, all right, that was good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then demand starts to grow and, mm-hmm. And now you get lines. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in, in, any chance you want to share the recipe? with? <laughs> ah, I can't share the recipe. <laughs> Super top secret. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's batter and a hot dog. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. A couple of other questions I wanted to get at with you. We talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the some of the failed attempts. So like right. the hot Cheetos one. I'm glad you guys canned that. <laughs> it's probably a good call. No dessert option. Uh, actually, if you go, we actually have done two okay. desserts. Um, okay. What year was that? Okay. Well, we'll say a few years ago, just because okay. they can't be exact. Um, sure. We did a thing my mom had come up with. It was really good. Uh, it was caramel on a stick, and then we dipped it in the batter and fried that up. Um, I don't think it had a special name. Okay. Uh, but that was one dessert option we went for. Okay. And at our pop-up events and things like that, we do funnel cakes. Oh, that's right. I think I yeah. did sit on your website. No s'mores, huh? No s'mores. All right. You guys got to give it a shot. You, know, yeah. you, you know where the royalty check came from. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> s'mores option yeah. seems like something. Although you guys are competing with everybody frying everything. Yeah. I mean, um, I think in there fried s'mores at the fair. Probably is. Yeah, There's I think there everything. is. Yeah. Um, one thing that kind of keeps us from doing that is just the sheer volume of corn dogs we do it's just hard yeah. to keep up with anything right. else right yeah and i can definitely attest to that from 
watching the process yeah. that you guys go through. You can't just toss anything into that vat no. and roll it through. It's like a it's it reminds me of the uh, the lazy river at, uh, at <laughs> Wet n Wild or, or Hurricane Harbor. Yeah, right? it's yeah, like, it just, it just, just in there toss floating them in there and they work their way around yeah. and the timing is flawless and they're ready to go on the other side. Yeah, I think in our large stills we can fit about fifty a time. It takes wow. about three minutes per wow. so Yeah. Yeah, and it's still probably it's hard to keep up with the demand based on the lines and. Crowd. Yeah, you know, um, Texas OU, we have that one standby big Tex that you know is everybody's favorite, right. and you'll have people waiting upwards of hour and a half. Yeah, and that's with, you know, just keeping those stoves full and in and out and in and out and. Right. We try to tell people, you know, we have six other stands if you want to go down there, but now nah, they want to be there by big Tex. Or so. they don't. Or they don't want to walk. Right? Yeah, that's true. Now you are uh, you're a bit of a foodie. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So yeah. Dallas gets some good restaurants. It does. Yeah, you got to have a favorite, or you got a top five, or something. Uh, let's see. I ooh, a favorite. That's hard to narrow down. I'm trying to think, you know, the places I went to the most. You know, a place I really enjoyed. Um, I lived down there for three years, and I just moved back up here to Flower Mound. But one of the places I really enjoyed while I was down there was a place called The Porch off of yeah. Knox. Yes. Yeah, it's on the Knox side. Yes. Yeah, that place. Good burgers. That is some good stuff. Yeah, it seems like they had a burger with an egg on it. Mm. They did, mm. yeah. I think it was actually called The Porch Burger. I think so. Yeah. yeah that, that, I've been a couple times, and that was the staple yeah, to get. Yeah. That's a good place. That place, um, you know, I'll just do a DFW tour. I like that place. Um and then over here in Louisville, we have a steakhouse called J2's. Okay, I've not been. Yeah, that place is very good. Mm. Um, go there pretty often. Okay. And then uh, go down to Denton, there's a place called Queenie's, which okay. is also kind of another steakhouse, okay. uh, southwestern. Very good. Okay. Very good. You mentioned Oddfellows earlier. Oh, yeah. Good, good chicken and waffles. Yeah. You know, I haven't had it. I went to Oddfellows uh, one time, yeah. and it was very good. I just... When I lived in Dallas, what I did was every weekend I went someplace new. So yeah. there wasn't a lot of doubling back. Yeah. So I mean, but I think during that time I probably covered a good ninety restaurants. Or so. Well, there's so many just over in that area, and they just keep popping up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. each spot. It, it seemed like especially when they would revitalize a new area. Yeah, you'd get some. New, you get something new. Something new that pops up, and then uh, yeah, it's, it's great. So many good restaurants. Not, not even to mention Addison there, and and you're a movie fanatic as well. Do you love some movies? So favorite movies. Favorite movies. Okay. I'm a, well, or you can do one. I'll give you three if if you have. To. <laughs> uh, it's just hard because I see so many. Yeah, actually, I guess my all-time favorite movie, the one I can probably watch over and over, is Gladiator. Oh, that's a great movie. That's my yeah, probably yeah. all-time. I can always go back, watch yeah. it. It's my yeah. son's favorite movie. Really? Well, I think The Matrix may be overtaking it. But, Matrix is pretty but good. But Gladiator is... But yeah, just, yeah, there's just something about Gladiator. Every time I put it on, I'm just I'm it's sucked re- in. It's, it's rewatchable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If it's on there, it's hard to pass up, man. Yeah, it's definitely. Lots of good one-liners in there, mm-hmm. good, powerful motivator. Yep. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm, I kind of... I'm big on the you know summer blockbusters you know i I see all the superhero movies all the sci-fi stuff um big big original trilogy fan for star wars okay not so much the newer stuff but the original trilogy i was a big fan of right yeah yeah i agree i think but i don't know if that's just because i was raised with it and i maybe just be biased i've been trying to figure that out because i watch it but then you know i watch it with people that haven't seen the original ones and they don't really like the new ones either so yeah yeah yeah, it's one of those series that there's not too many movies where a part two or three are as good or better yeah. than the first. Uh, the handful, maybe. You know, yeah. Terminator series, I think Terminator yeah. 2. Terminator 2 was better than much the better first. Than one, right? yeah. And uh, I think Empire Strikes Back is. Yes. Uh, that, that's one I of the exceptions. I definitely agree with you right there. Yeah, that's one of the exceptions. Otherwise, you know, pretty hard. To, to pick one that where the where the where the, yeah. the second show was better than the first. Yeah, no, I can't really off the top of my head think of any. Yeah, but that series for sure. Yeah. yeah. How has it been with uh, with the COVID situation? You got no movie theaters to go to. I know, man. Do you prefer it's... to watch them at home? No, now you can, you can kind of do that. I know, but I'm I'm a big fan of going to movies and True. you know get my popcorn and Absolutely. just sitting there. Um, so I I haven't really done much of the new releases yeah. at home. I think you know the first week. It happened. You know, I was all excited because, oh, I can just rent it home. But right. yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah, I think I, we watched uh, The Hunt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Although I say that I did rent one what, yesterday or last couple this past week, and uh, it was still okay. It's nice yeah. to be able to hit pause, right? But it's still not quite no, the same. No. As, the atmosphere, as, you know, you got to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. The, my next question for you is uh, how many how many uh, boxes of corny dogs can you bench press? Now? <laughs> um, let me see. Let me try and guess. Let's figure out how much a box of corny dogs weighs. I think each box is five pounds. So. 80 boxes wow okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you're uh i think i can't remember what it said when we were looking some information up on you it was like yeah. the amount you could bench press was pretty outrageous so it's yeah my all time is about 560 wow that's yeah. impressive yeah, yeah there was a time when i could uh watch you do that yeah. <laughs> that's about as much no i probably won't even do that i'll just go get a corny <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> All right, maybe my uh, maybe my last series of questions back on the business side. So if you look back at it, you know you've been involved in the in the family business, like I said, for a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, gotten to see and observe, and and uh, and then been a part of this pivot process yeah. as you guys are shifting gears, right? What advice do you have out there for for the small business folks in Dallas? Oh man, um, I guess the best advice I could give is be willing to pivot. Yeah. You know, that's, there's so many businesses that, you know, have such a straightforward model for this is how we do things. And we were like that, but, you know, having an open mind and really looking out there and seeing what other people are doing and looking at what you can do and maybe not totally copy it, but, you know, maybe open it up with like, okay, well we do this, but we might be able to do it like this. Mm-hmm. Um, is probably the best, best thing I could tell somebody to do. Yeah. Just, you know, stay open to everything. Yeah. And then, you know, we tried on each podcast, uh, especially when we're talking about people's personal stories and their and their business mm-hmm. story, which is to think back uh, to, to that little bit of minutiae detail for, that you would whisper to yourself maybe a year, two years ago, three years ago. I have a friend that calls it uh, Hello, Younger Me. <laughs> uh, what would you have told yourself to get your to, to, to make this transition easier uh, for you in your particular business? That. See, I don't know. Like, so much of what we're doing now, we couldn't have done back then. Right. So it's, it's very hard to say. Was there anything you, you would have done to help yourself uh, pivot easier? Honestly, no. Yeah. You know, I think, no I think, extra food truck? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, it would be hard to say that because in the situation we were in back then, the food truck wouldn't have been necessary. Yeah, right, right. Um, so... You know, I guess there's younger me five months ago. <laughs> you know, I yeah. could have said maybe, you know, when all those deals are going on, you know, with the car companies offering zero interest for 100 months or whatever, yeah. buy a truck and another trailer. Sure. Um, but hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But as far as, you know, five years ago, I don't think there's anything I could have told myself to make it easier now. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, folks can reach out to you guys on your website and find out where your events are going to be at. Yes. Uh, anything else you want to share with listeners uh, about the business, of play, ways they can get in touch with you guys? Um, you know, we're always on Instagram at Fletcher's Corny Dogs. Um, same with Twitter. Actually, I think Twitter is at Fletcher's Dogs. Um, Facebook, uh, Fletcher's Original Corny Dogs. Our website, Fletcher's cornydogs.com um we do our best you know to get back to everybody any way we can you know customer service is you know on the same line as quality control for us so you know we always want to be on top of that and we always want to make sure a customer is happy or if they're not happy whatever we can do to rectify the situation yeah. um yeah that's the easiest well, way you guys are a, a dfw legacy so it's good to see you guys have pivoted and you're going to be all right and uh and that we can go get our fix yeah definitely find you guys you got out there plenty of opportunities the rest of the year to come get a fix so <laughs> it's fantastic yeah aaron thanks for taking the time I really yeah definitely appreciate it. Brent, one of my favorite things about the episode was all the shout outs that we got for some of the local businesses that Aaron and Fletcher's have been involved with for so many years. Yeah, and he listed out some places that I really love as well. And it says a lot about their company and about Aaron himself to, to, so he's supporting local business as well. And I think that's why he really wanted to come out here and, and, and to, uh, to come on the podcast is, supporting small business in Dallas, supporting it. They're, they're not a small business. These guys are pretty good size, right? These are the staple of the, of the, of the, of the state. And so I think, um, it says a lot about him to support and prop up and speak highly of those others. And it makes me want to go support them. Not, not only the fact that I'm overdue for a jalapeno cheese corny dog. 
It doesn't have any of the cheese chips. You know, would you hot would you try the Frito one? I, th- I, I would. I would. I would try. I the, bet you would. Yeah. I would try the hot Frito one. Maybe, yeah. but I need it mixed in the batter. So that's a. <laughs> hopefully, he gets that. You know, patented, right. and they can right. go work that out. Because I'd be game to try that. Hey, if you have crazy ideas for these guys, go jump on their social media, jump on their Instagram page, and throw some comments. And they are putting their schedule of where they will be on their social media. At, they're going to be all over DFW. Figure out where they're going to be close to you. And go check them out. Support or make some a locals. drive. Make a drive. Go. So you're supporting a, a significant business, and at the same time, you're getting your fix in for the state fair. If you can't get the state fair, it's one thing, but you got to go get your Fletcher's corny dog. Thank you uh, also to Lori Walker uh, again, and wanted to make sure that we give a shout out to the Chamber of Commerce that was able to set us up. Uh, for an interview with Aaron. Sincerely appreciate it. And if you've got other success stories of uh, folks in the DFW area that are working through this crisis, that are pivoting, we've got some, you know, several other interviews already scheduled out that we're, we're that we're taking, and we're going to bring you those stories so you can hear those as well. But if you've got others, or if you're a small business out there and you'd like to uh, have your pivoted story heard, reach out to us. We'd be glad to have a conversation. Absolutely. Have a great week, folks.